Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. Out of all 14 weapons in Monster Hunter Rise, none have captured me quite as much as the Switch Axe. With two modes of play and plenty of reason to swap between the two on the fly, it remains the best example that a great defense is a great offense. Welcome to my tutorial on the Switch Axe. The Switch Axe is essentially two weapons in one, and they both synergize wonderfully together. You'll get a long axe with decent mobility and fantastic reach, as well as a sword which is slower but great for dishing out a ton of damage. Using the sword mode uses up your switch gauge, so you'll need to reload it from time to time. Do enough hits in sword mode and you'll enter an amp state and both the sword and axe start to get extra hits. In this guide I'll be covering the moves of the weapon and philosophy behind when and why to use each. I'll start with the basic moves that you should understand, and then intermediate mechanics that'll add complexity and nuance to the weapon. Finally, I'll cover the switch skills, silkbind attacks, and recommended armor skills. Weapon Basics We'll start out with the axe mode. From idle, press X to do an overhead slash. This move has a ton of reach, and like most axe attacks, it'll be perfect for chopping off tails that are positioned higher in the air. Press X again to do a side slash. And press X a third time to do the rising slash, which reaches pretty high. These three moves will loop if you press X repeatedly while idle. The rising slash can be done idle or after any move by pressing X and A. It's less powerful than the overhead smash, but it's quicker, meaning that it's a really nice combo starter if you notice that your target is in the air or at a higher position. After any move with the axe, you can press left or right and B to do a single sidestep. This is a fabulous way to get out of harm's way when you are hacking and slashing at a monster, and really good for general repositioning. The most common move that you'll use to start an axe combo is by pressing X with some forward input on the left stick to do a forward slash. This is a great move that moves you forward a bit, making it easier to close distances. After any evade or sidestep, if you press X you'll also do the forward slash, so you can see how you can use this to cover ground pretty fast. Finally, the rising slash can be replaced in the three hit combo loop, so you can do forward slash, overhead slash, then side slash, and then just repeat. Now on to the A button. At any time while idle or inside a combo, press A to start a move called the wild swing. You can continue to press the A button and you'll chop away while your stamina slowly goes down. You can keep swinging until your stamina runs out, or you do have several finishers to choose from. The first one is that you can simply evade out of it. This is great if you realize that you are over committing or that your opening is no longer there. The second is to press ZR to do a wide sweep. This is a very wide hitting move that does three hits and you can follow it up with a sidestep or you can follow it up by pressing X to do the rising slash. The third and most useful finisher is by pressing X to do a heavy slam. You will need to have swung the axe at least three times in order to do this move. Not only is it very powerful and looks cool, but also has a very useful feature which I'll cover later in this guide. Finally, the axe mode has one more option for mobility and that is the fade slash. Hold back on the left stick in relation to your hunter and press A to perform this move. You can do a fade slash pretty much after any move. Overall, the axe mode is pretty much about reach, so choose whichever attack you feel is best depending on the situation at hand. Now it's time to get into the main feature of this weapon, which is the sword. In fact, in Japan, the switch axe is called the slash axe, so you can really start to feel how the slashing part is so integral. At any time, press ZR to morph into sword. You can do this from the sheath state, while idle, or after any axe attack. Press ZR after an axe attack to morph to sword, and press ZR after a sword attack to morph to axe. It's that simple. The sword mode has two major features. First, each switch axe has a file type, which you'll find on the equipment screen, and these give extra power to the attacks done with the sword. For example, if your switch axe has paralysis, you can build up the status ailment by attacking in sword mode. Second, the attacks from the sword mode will never bounce off the target no matter how hard of a spot you hit. Pretty nice, huh? Well, you can't stay in sword mode forever. Or at least not really. Each attack with the sword will consume energy from the switch gauge up on the upper left hand side of the screen, 
And once you run out, you'll automatically be thrown back into axe mode. The animation is long, so make sure you switch back before you run out. While in axe mode, you can press ZR and it'll do a reload animation. Okay, let's go over these sword mode attacks. These can look pretty similar and it's a little hard to tell the combos, which I'll walk through in the second half of this part. First, let's cover the X button attacks. Press X to do the overhead slash. Press X again to do the right rising slash. And press X a third time to do a left rising slash. This is just a three hit combo that will loop as you press X. Now the A button attacks, which I like to think of as like the strong attacks. Press A to do a double slash. Then press A again to do the heavenward flurry. If you press A during the X combo, it'll generally go into the double slash. But if you do it at the very end of the three hit combo with X, which is the left rising slash, it'll produce a special triple slash. This sort of replaces the double slash, so if you press A again afterwards, it'll go into the heavenward flurry. The sword mode has one heck of an explosive selling point, and that is if you press X and A at the same time, you'll go into the element discharge. Keep pressing X to ramp up the hits and you'll end with an explosive element discharge finisher. The final blast does fixed damage, so it doesn't matter how hard or soft the part you hit is. If you don't have enough time to finish the whole thing, you could pull back on the left stick in relation to your hunter and press X to quickly end it with a weaker element finisher. After the attack, you'll automatically morph back into axe mode, and you'll notice it will take a lot out of your switch gauge. The fastest move to combo into the elemental discharge is the double slash using the A button. Okay, that was a lot to take in, so let's do a quick recap. In axe mode, you have the X button combo, and forward and X gives you that wonderful forward slash. You have the A button, which does the wild swing, and from there you have a few different options. At any time, you can press ZR to morph into sword mode. In sword, it's similar in that you have a fast X button combo, as well as a longer A button combo. Press ZR at any time to morph back into X mode, or press X and A and then X repeatedly to do a powerful element discharge. Weapon Mechanics the switch axe is more than just the ability to swap between two modes, and there are some important mechanics that will add both power and nuance to the weapon. First, I want to take a moment to specifically talk about morph attacks. We know that pressing ZR after any attack in axe mode will morph you into sword, and vice versa. Well, there are a few specific moves that will produce a more powerful morph attack. For axe mode, there are two. There's the overhead slash, and the heavy slam. This results in the Morph Rising Double Slash. I know that's a mouthful. This move is pretty good, but what it's special for is that if you press A afterwards, you'll get quick access to that triple slash. For Sword Mode, press ZR after any A button attack and you'll do the powerful Morph Double Slash into the Axe Mode. This move does a ton of damage on the second hit. You can do this by pressing ZR after the Double Dash, the Heavenward Flurry, or even the Triple Slash. As for weapon mechanics, let's start with the Amped State. As you attack in sword mode, be it through normal slash attacks or the element discharge, you'll notice a glow around the switch gauge that starts to go up. Once this completely fills up, you'll enter what is called an Amped State, and every attack that you do, both in sword mode and axe mode, will get extra file explosions. The type of file blast will depend on the switch axe you're using. An amp state lasts for just 45 seconds, so it's a mode that you really want to take full advantage of. You can use the armor skill Power Prolonger to extend that all the way to a minute and a half with level 3, which I highly recommend. So this begs the question, how many hits does it take and what is the fastest way to get into an amp state? If you recall, the second A button attack for sword mode has a long animation time. That's because its main purpose is to fill the amped gauge. There's one other move, which is the Heavy Slam Finisher, which is done by pressing X after three or more swings in the Wild Swing Attack for X. For the next 60 seconds, your amp gauge will build up faster. Amped gauge buildup is also different depending on the file type of Switch Axe. 
power file types produce a strong power boosted sword attacks, so to balance things out it is by far the slowest to build up to an amp state. So making use of that heavy slam bonus is going to be pretty important for that type of switch axe. The next one in terms of how fast it is to get into an amp state would be paralysis. And then a tie between elemental and exhaust. And by far the fastest type to get into an amp state is poison and dragon. The next mechanic I want to cover is the zero sum discharge. Once you're in an amp state, your hits from both sword mode and axe get file explosions, making you very powerful. If you do an element discharge while you're in an amp state, you'll clutch onto the monster and do the attack on that body part. You cannot be shaked off during this attack, but you will take damage so please be careful with this. This is more powerful than a normal elemental discharge and allows you to focus all of your attacks on a specific part of the monster. If you feel you are in danger, you could just stop inputting X and you'll end the zero sum discharge a bit faster, and this one has a good recovery option when you land on the ground. However, I admit that I've never really used this before and I generally just jam X until I get the natural finisher. Finally, because there are so many different choices of attacks and when to morph, it's very important for me to go over the two most common combos that you'll want to use. To build up your amp gauge, the main combo is basically just the two A button attacks with sword, and then a side step to loop the combo. It does take some time to do and then you're not really doing a lot of damage, so you could just loop X and A attacks with the sword mode if you want to do it with shorter burst attacks. To do massive damage once you are in an amp state, go into sword mode and press A to do the double slash then ZR to do that powerful axe morph, then immediately ZR again to morph back to sword, press A and it just kind of repeats. Silkbind attacks. The switch axe has two silkbind attacks at your disposal and an additional one that you can unlock later. Unlike some weapons where the silkbind attacks are simply icing on the cake, the moves for switch axe are very useful and will become a full part of your arsenal. The Invincible Gambit. Cost, one wire bug. Press Z, L, and X to activate this skill. You'll rush forward and do a series of axe attacks. You still take damage, but you will not get knocked out of this attack, making it perfect for just going ham on a monster, plunging through roars, or closing gaps. It only costs one wire bug and is a great move to use when you're getting used to the switch axe. You can actually aim and adjust the direction of the final hit a bit by using input on the left stick. Switch Charger, cost one wire bug. Press Z, L, and A to activate this skill. You'll do a forward slide and recover some of your switch gauge, and for the next seven seconds, you won't consume any switch gauge, meaning if you do this and go right into an elemental discharge or zero sum discharge, you basically get to do it for free. There's also a very tight window at the top in which you have some iframes, but it's pretty severe. This is gonna be your main way for reloading your switch gauge because it's far easier and safer than doing that sluggish reload animation in axe mode and it's perfect for repositioning. On a down monster or just during a good opportunity, I'll often use this and then press ZR right afterwards to go right back into sword mode. Switch skills. The first switch skill is the forward vertical slash, which can replace your forward slash. You will unlock this once you do eight unique crafts or upgrades for any switch axe. This moves you forward quite a bit, so it's very good for closing distance and does tons of damage. Also, if you press ZR after, you can go right into a double morph slash, which of course can lead into the triple slash with A, and then ZR to get that powerful axe morph attack. This one will come down simply into preference. If you're someone who fights close to the monster anyways, then the forward slash may be best, but if you can get down the distance for this one, it's a great move to use as well. The Condensed Elemental Slash. You'll unlock this by completing the special switch axe quest in the four star gathering hall. This is a far faster version of the element discharge finisher that does both cutting and fixed damage blast. It allows you to pull it off really fast and you are immune to knockback during it. However, there are some major downsides. First, this is not a move that you want to use online as it will send your teammates flying in the air when you do it. Second, it removes your ability to do the zero sum discharge, and in fact this move just ignores the amp state altogether. 
I do like to use this one sometimes when I'm solo hunting with a power file type switch axe, since that's already pretty hard to get into an amp state. But in most cases, I think you'll probably appreciate the normal element discharge. Flying Wyvern Blade. You'll unlock this once you get to Village 3 star or Gathering Hall 2 star, and oh baby. If there was ever a selling point that you needed for the weapon, this would be it. This replaces the Invincible Gambit, and you activate it by pressing Z, L, and X. You'll jump high up in the air and then press X to do a diagonal slash downward. If you hit the monster on that downward hit, not only do you get a ton of buildup for the amped gauge, but you also do a powerful explosion on the spot that you hit. If you do this while your hunter's already in the air, you'll go right into that downward thrust without having to press X. What makes this move even better is that you can do it right after a zero sum discharge when you're blasted off of a monster, which makes it sort of function like a second finisher. The explosion also hits anything close to it, making it powerful for multiple monsters or in rampages. Useful armor skills. As I mentioned before, Power Prolonger is a wonderful skill for this weapon. Normally an amp state lasts for 45 seconds, but with level one, it's extended to 58 seconds, one minute and 12 seconds with level two, and a full minute and a half with level three, which is double the duration. Since all of your attacks do extra file explosions and you get access to the zero sum discharge, the longer you're in an amp state, the more damage you'll do. Rapid Morph is also an amazing skill for this weapon, and therefore you'll likely want to hunt lots of Almadrons. It speeds up your morph attacks and makes them more powerful, so this at level 3 is basically a no-brainer. For other quality of life, uh, Razor Sharp is also very good. Uh, since you'll be hitting so much, you'll eat through sharpness pretty fast, especially if you're doing a lot of the elemental discharge. Evade Extender level 1 is also a favorite skill and really gives you a ton of extra mobility with this weapon and its sidesteps. Plus, many people like to stay in sword mode and the mobility there is quite limited, so just having Evade Extender level 1 can really help offset that. Other than that, just pack in as much attack and quality of life skills you like. I personally like to include Stun Resistance level 3 since I'm always playing so aggressive with the weapon. That concludes my Switch Axe guide. I do hope you try it out, it's a really fabulous weapon and stylish as all get out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, happy hunting.